Hi fellow Cretans, it's this time of the year again. As usual, I'll do my best to sum up all the Krita features that made their way into the new version. I'm gonna be honest, that was not the easiest video to make, as this version is a bit different than usual. It's a very technical release, as core Krita developers seem to be focusing more on sticking to long-term plans than on quick gain. I mean, that's great, but it results in majority of work done by them being only a preparation for what will make more sense only in a rather distant future. Like, don't be discouraged so fast. There are a handful of new features, obviously, but if that's the only thing you crave, hmm. This time you may be more happy with the resources released by Krita community. In the past year, we got some amazing traditional looking brushes and the plugin which adds new keyboard shortcuts and editable pie menus. All three links in the description. But here we go, the Krita 5.2 changelog. Transform tool now can operate on multiple selected layers at once. You no longer need to group them, just select a few random layers to warp them, scale them, liquefy them, or do whatever you need to make your artwork pretty and shiny. Speaking of selecting layers, you no longer need a keyboard for that. New checkboxes in Layer Docker should come handy on Android devices, but if you don't like them, they're easy to hide. Layer thumbnails are now way better at cropping exactly to their content. Apart from their names, layers can now display their opacity and blending mode. There are various options specifying when to display this additional info, so make sure to pick the one that fits you best. There's a new implementation of the Color Selector Docker. It can do everything that the previous one could, but unlike its predecessor, the new selector is capable of working outside of sRGB color space. But if you don't care about professional stuff like that, or more likely, you don't own a fancy monitor which could even display those colors, you may still like the improved visual design, especially in its pop-up form, new available selector shapes, or the cool looking color ring. It's not just me, it looks cool, isn't it? Hmm. At least for now, you need to activate it by yourself, but once Krita devs are sure everything works fine, it will fully replace the existing one sometime in the future. Huge quality of life changes were made to the animation workspace. After tackling legal issues, FFMPEG is now shipped with Krita. That means you no longer need to install separate software to export animations from Krita to movie formats like MP4, GIF or MOV. Also, exporting movies is now easier with the simplified dialog windows. The audio system was rewritten from scratch and you should no longer experience problems with music not syncing to timeline. To name some other small new features, preset docker has a better layout when placed horizontally, there's a new shortcut to select all the layers under the cursor, also there's one which allows to select a specific layer below your mouse. There are no defaults for those I believe, so you need to set them by yourself. Canvas inputs detect conflicts between shortcuts, lots of dialogues in Krita have bigger or smaller improvements to the layouts, blending modes in SMIC now work more like in Photoshop, and users coming from CSP can use dedicated shortcuts profile. Anyway, now let's move on to the things that took the majority of core developers time, which you as a user should never notice. In the past year, 421 bugs were fixed. The Krita text tool, notorious for being not really useful for creating text, was fully rewritten. Its engine is now capable of things that the first Kritans could only dream of. You know, filling custom shapes, placing text on paths, rendering different alphabets, emojis, and more. <laughs> Don't celebrate too early though. The small catch here is that you won't really be able to use any of those features, as there is no interface for that yet. That comes to Krita 5.3, finally making it possible to edit the text directly on the canvas. But jokes aside, rewriting the text tool internals is a huge milestone, and we're on the right track to getting a text tool which Krita deserves. Just a bit more patience. Brush settings were re-implemented using a new programming library called Lagger. There are no visible changes to it, but now as things are nicely separated from each other and better thought through, it becomes possible to easily add new options, divide them into different dockers and windows, expose them to Python, create keyboard shortcuts for them, and more. Once again, something you'll sadly only notice in future releases of Krita. Qt was updated from version 5.12 to 5.15. Qt is a set of tools used by Krita to handle desktop elements like windows, dockers, buttons, and basically everything that you can press or click that is not the canvas. It's a big step forward before transitioning to the latest Qt6. But if in the past you experienced problems with Krita dialogues, dockers and their interactions with your system, those could have been fixed by Qt developers in the new version Krita now uses. 
Krita plugins now use Python 3.10 instead of 3.8. That increases plugin performance, but more importantly, it gives its developers access to new Python features, making our life easier. <sighs> to sum things up, uh, this release brings a ton of changes that are not really visible to the user. It's kind of sad that such a huge amount of work will go mostly unnoticed, but while it may not immediately result in the new features, trust me, it's gonna pay off in the years to come. Speaking of paying, you know, doing maintenance work like that isn't really the most profitable thing to do. Not releasing a new version for such a long time resulted in a small decline in funding. So if you have some spare cash, consider helping the team to keep doing what they're doing. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, have a lot of fun with this new version, and see you in the future videos. Cheers!